Welcome to the seventh edition of the European Film Festival. It's done in partnership with the EU delegation to South Africa and the 12 European uh, embassies and cultural agencies. We invite you, of course, to visit the festival's website. That's www.eurofilmfest.co.za. That's eurofilmfest.co.za for all the details about the films and special activities that we've put together um, taking place at this festival. My name is Africa Melane, and it is my singular pleasure and honor to introduce you to one of Austria's most celebrated and award-winning uh, directors. He picked up the Oscar for the incredibly powerful film, The uh, Counterfeiters. He's given us other films, of course. He started out in 1996 with the film Tempo, um, which was his first array into feature films after um, directing musical videos for NSYNC and commercials as well. Um, more recently, we've seen Deadfall and Patient Zero from him. Stefan Ruzovitsky, I do apologize for butchering the same name. So lovely to chat to you. Thank you very much. Firstly, for a most beautiful film. It really, really is just so heart-rending, so moving and so honest. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's um, yes, it's uh, it's very personal as well in a way. So so I I I think I never had the feeling that that so many characters in the movie were expressing uh, feelings and thoughts uh, that I have as a as a as a person. Let's explore that for a bit because this is a classic piece of work. Um, yeah. uh, it was written in 1930, which is what, 90 years ago? How, how does this classic piece of literature resonate so deeply with you still in 2020? Um, it's a German classic and um, I mean, back in the days when people were still reading books, uh, everybody read it, you know, and it was in particular uh, something that, that young adults were reading. So, so at the age of 15, 16, 17, uh, everybody read this book and it was sort of literature and at the same time it was touching so many themes that were relevant for you at that time, you know, like first love. Uh, uh, finding your way in life, uh, friendship, um, all these things. And, and uh, so uh, I fell in love when I read it uh, back then. And uh, now when I was uh, approached to make a movie out of it, of course, I, I couldn't resist and, and, and had to do it. And is that how it happened, where you were approached and asked whether uh, yeah. you would like to make a movie out of it? I think um, um, the project was around for, for many, many years and uh, many, many of my colleagues tried to do something uh, with it, but it never came together. And, uh, you know, and um, there were production companies who owned the, the, the rights and then uh, after a couple of years, they sort of said, uh, we give up, uh, it just doesn't work. And, uh, um, and now it finally came together, luckily. Uh, the book in question, of course, is Narcissus and Goldmund, uh, written by Hermann Hesse, who himself was not a great fan of film work. In fact, uh, was somewhat opposed to the idea of his uh, literary writing being converted into film. Yes, he was. And there's uh, sort of uh, uh, his, his uh, grandchildren, you know, who took a very... You know, who really took care uh, that I, I wouldn't um, do anything bad uh, to their grandfather's book and, and they had to, to uh, confirm everything and, and uh, we had some discussions uh, but now at the end uh, they are very happy about the, the result uh, uh, because of course you, uh, I had to as a, as a writer, I wrote the script myself as well, uh, you have to change things you know it's it's uh, um, it's a it's a novel which you transform into a movie and uh, of course uh, these 90 years you know certain things uh, uh, mean something different nowadays and and so you have to translate it uh, in a way as well and uh, sometimes you know do something which is different from from uh, the novel to to um, meet what uh, Herman Hesse tried to express. 
I, 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 many years myself, picked up the book. And of course, I read the English translation, which I imagine would have been a very different experience altogether um, when it is read and understood in its original language. It's a story of two very different friends, a medieval monk who lives a a cloistered life surrounded by books and ideas um, on the one hand and then a randy artist and a vagabond. In fact, uh, in the book, you, you, you see or read about Narcissus in the first bit of the book and once again at the end of the book. You've made a very conscious decision of having him come through the book repeatedly. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to us about how you went about that process. Uh, I think that was uh, sort of the, the biggest problem uh, my predecessors uh, uh, who tried to, to, to uh, make a movie out of this um, were, were fighting with because uh, uh, this is the story of a big friendship uh, and you can't tell a friendship if one of the friends uh, is, is, is gone for the, for the biggest chunk of the movie. And so what I did, I established like a framework you know, we start with uh, the friends meeting again, and then uh, Goldmund, who, who um, has traveled the world, had traveled the world, is, is telling his friends what happened in between. And so we have uh, the other friend always present, and he's commenting uh, on, on, on his best friend's um, adventures and, and, and sort of the things uh, that... that uh, uh, he um, experienced. Uh, central, of course, to uh, Herman Hesse's writing was that these two characters, he almost kept them very simple. They were quite mm -hmm. archetypal in many ways. You knew uh, what the one was thinking and feeling and where they came from, and you knew what the other was thinking and feeling and where they came from. And I think you kept true to that. Um, the complexity comes in what happens around them, the interactions with life that they come across, the characters that are obviously brought into it. And, and also key is that at no point does Herman Hesse judge either character. And I think, I think that came through quite strongly. Is that a fine line that you were, you were quite conscious of, not to judge these two characters of the choices they made? Um, I think a little bit he is judging, you know, because uh, sort of the monk at the end of the day uh, realizes uh, that he has missed a lot of things by not uh, having the courage uh, to, to, to go out and, and confront reality, you know, but, but, but stay in that safe space, uh, um, where, where uh, you know, you, uh, the safe space of the monastery where you can't commit any sins uh, uh, and uh, uh, where nothing really happens. And uh, uh, whereas uh, the other one, Goldman, the artist who has been around and has led a sinful life, uh, in a way, it's, 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 um, um, I think we learn that this might be uh, the approach to life that even God likes better, you know, to confront yourself, to, to, to try out something, uh, to make mistakes uh, and, and pay for them, uh, but to experience life and, and, and uh, reality. But it's, you're right, it's not judging in a way, you know, this is better, this is worse. But, but I think if you, if you refuse to confront yourself with, with reality and the life, Life as it is, uh, you're missing something. This, I think, uh, is in the book and in the movie as well. Uh, how, how, how much did the book help in creating the visual aspect to the movie? Um, it, it, is, it is unbelievably rich and beautiful and you know, you feel the cold of winter, you feel the lushness of the forests, you, you, you just, you take us to these beautiful landscapes in the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a movie about, if you're expecting sort of uh, uh, like a um, uh, naturalistic, realistic image of the Middle Ages, uh, this is not the movie uh, that will uh, 
provide you with that. You know, it's, it's, it's a very romanticized uh, image of the world. And uh, the idea was uh, we see uh, this whole world through the eyes of an artist, you know, he, who experiences everything, as you said, you know, when it's winter, it's very cold. And when it's beautiful, it's very beautiful. And if he meets a beautiful woman, she's super beautiful. You know, maybe in reality, she was not that beautiful. But in the movie, because that's his, um, his views, his perspective, uh, she's the most beautiful wo uh, girl of the world. And so uh, the idea was show everything through his eyes, which is uh, sort of bigger than life in many ways. Understandably, I mean, and, and when and when you see Goldwyn's life, and when we we we're literally looking at the world through his eyes, it is full of color. It is even in the winter that the white of the snow just seems to just you know pop from the screen, whereas that of Narcissus is a little bit more stoic, more gothic, more gray, I suppose, and not in a negative sense, but in a way of just differentiating, I suppose, between the tempos of the two. Exactly, it's it's reduced uh, to few colors uh, as it is in the in the monastery. You know, in, in the monks' habits, uh, they are black and white only, and there are no colors. You know, and and uh, that of course was a deliberate choice. I'm going to get a bit personal because you did at the very beginning of this interview say that this was a very personal story. Mm -hmm. Which of the two characters are you? <laughs> it's, uh, I think the theory is, which is true for me as well, that nobody is like 100% on this side, 100% on that side. And, and for me, you know, cause, cause as you can imagine, I've been asked that question before. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's quite a luxurious position cause, cause when I'm writing, you know, I'm, I'm 100% uh, Narcissus. You know, sitting in my uh, cozy little office and everything's happening. Everything happens up here, uh, but uh, then when I'm shooting, you know, it's all Goldmund. It's 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 24 hours full of adrenaline and and passion and depression because things don't work out the way you wanted them to work out, and uh, you're you're always around people and 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 there's love and emotions, uh, uh, and so this works for me very well you know to 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 uh, move from being 100% on this side to being 100% of the other side and not sort of somewhere um, in the middle an impossible and, and and silly question is there is there a preference do you prefer to be the person in the writing uh, stage uh, sitting in a, a desk the solitude and the loneliness and in inverted commas yeah. of that or do you prefer the boisterous and loud and let's get this film to screen kind of uh, person in you? Uh, if I had to make a choice, I'd definitely go for the, for the set, you know, for <laughs> Uh, I love being on the set. I love the hysteria, the 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 stress, uh, the the uh, emotionality, all that. So I think I couldn't live without that. Um, yeah, but but you know, as I don't have to 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 make the choice, uh, it's very nice to be uh, you know in those quiet areas of of, of writing a screen or also. Uh, being in the, the editing room, which is also very narcissist-ish. Uh, <laughs> Ish. Um, I suppose simplistically, people might appreciate the book and therefore the movie to be a story of friendship. I, I think it's, it's a, a lot more complex than that. And, yes. and um, particularly in the characters that you bring into the story, uh, th there are very many pertinent life questions that you're left with. And, and it's a joy to just sit back for a couple of hours. And if you've been lucky enough to watch it with a friend, talk about some of the themes that have come through uh, to the movie. But, but perhaps let's go back for a moment to that essential element of the book, that of friendship. Do you have such a friendship? Have you had a friendship in your life that has stood the test of time, distance, uh, challenges and celebrations in life? Uh, I think so, but 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 like not one person. I mean, like like Narcissus and Goldman, not one person I've been together with uh, for 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 many many years. But but there are some people, you know, and some of them I haven't seen for years. And and then you meet again, and uh, everything is there again right away. You know, and it, it feels like we never 
uh, uh, left each other, and right away we can we can talk for hours about uh, uh, many things. So so um, I think that's the beauty of it. You know that it's it, it's not about that kind of friendship. You know, like a colleague you're together with uh, every day, but but that there are people where you. Uh, sort of in your soul uh, feel a closeness uh, which which does not uh, weaken over time and and uh, is still there even if you are sort of like Narcissus and Goldman uh, have completely different paths in your life and 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 your approach to life and and where you live and what you do Religion is almost a character on its own in this film. Um, you, you, you obviously set it in a, in a monastery of monks. Uh, Catholicism is what came to, to mind um, uh, instinctively. Uh, and religion can be a source of gathering and celebration, but also a source of conflict. Uh, you would have been careful, obviously, in how you depicted the religious aspects in this film, I imagine. Yes, uh, for me, religion is is, is not uh, such a big issue because 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 uh, um, I mean uh, I'm telling the story of that monk, uh, but actually it's the story. If you're looking for such a, a character nowadays, uh, it wouldn't be a monk but an intellectual, you know, uh, uh, who does the same thing, you know, like like observing everything from a from a distant point and not really uh, going to the places where things happen but 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 always being in a in a safe distance and and uh, that's what uh, Narcissus as a monk or an abbot later on uh, does as well uh, and um, sort of the the the, the biggest um, or most profound religious question is um, what is uh, or how are you supposed to live your life? You know what we what we talked about before. Uh, uh, isn't it what God wanted who created sin that you commit sins uh, that you're making mistakes in order? Uh, because they are part of life and reality as well, uh, in order to grow and and become a a complete person, isn't that what God wanted? Uh, in spite of sort of shying away and and never making any mistakes, because you don't do anything and you don't confront yourself with reality. I got to enjoy this film sitting on the uh, on my couch uh, and and watching it there because of COVID nineteen and the yes. shutting down cinemas. In fact, uh, the the lockdown in uh, in Austria and Germany was announced a day after you released the film. That must have yes. devastated you. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, it's, you know, uh, it was devastating. It was sort of the worst possible uh, release date um, in retrospect. Uh, but then again, you know, it's, it's like uh, people are losing their lives and they, they, uh, they're, they're, um, you know, losing their jobs, uh, uh, losing their companies, go bankrupt. So I think I should not uh, pity myself too much. You know, because, uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm, I can hope that people get to see the movie via streaming services or whatever, but yes. I know, it, it, it is as beautiful on a small screen as I imagine it would have been magical uh, on a big screen. Of course, it was made for the big screen, you know. <laughs> the, the idea was, you know, what kind of movie should we have to, to bring people back to the movie theaters and to, to enjoy the big screen. But yes, it is what it is. Let me tell the viewers that you'll be part of a live Zoom discussion on transforming book to film. And that's mm -hmm. going to be on Tuesday, the 17th of November at six o'clock. And uh, there, Stefan will go into the, I suppose, the details, the, um, the minutia of transforming a book as classical as this uh, into uh, the, the silver screen. Uh, we've caught you in the middle of a film project. What are you working on now, Stefan? Um. I did a movie which 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 is a sort of a bit of an experiment. Uh, uh, there's this classic movie, um, uh, Dr. Caligari, which was shot in uh, uh, right after the First World War, and all the set decorations were kind of distorted. 
uh, because uh, you know expressionism and and they somehow wanted to to uh, see the world through the eyes of the protagonist uh, and for him you know nothing is like stable anymore but everything is feels wrong and distorted and so we're doing this digitally so we shot the whole movie uh, in a, a blue box you know and now uh, afterwards we're we're adding the backgrounds and the backgrounds are uh, Vienna 1919 and everything is distorted and it really looks very special uh, this I can uh, promise as for now and and um, yeah and as we speak you know every other week uh, I get to see some some of the shots with the background and then we say add some uh, um, um, uh, extras on the right and the building on the left needs to be more distorted uh, and it's a really uh, very special way to to make a movie i cannot wait to see it and i hope i'll have a chance to see it on the big screen in a post covid night <laughs> yes. thank you very much for your time uh stefan and thank you for a most beautiful film um i can see how personal and meaningful it was to you and uh, as a person sitting well on my couch this time enjoying it uh it really really trans transferred thank you very much for your time thank you thanks for having me bye and Thank you, of course, for uh, your time and interest. The European Film Festival is a partnership project of the EU delegation of South Africa, as well as the 12 European embassies and their cultural agencies. The festival ends on the 22nd of November, and we invite you to please visit www.eurofilmfest.co.za. That's eurofilmfest.co.za. And always, always follow us on social media. Enjoy the film. This is Austria's contribution to the Film Festival, and I cannot recommend it enough. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>